You're watching another Nerd Stalker interview. Welcome to another Nerd Stalker uh, Kickstarter Unbox. Well, we'll call this the Indiegogo edition. We'll tell you a little yep. bit more about that. Uh, good after, uh, good uh, morning. This is Greg Glory, AK Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network. Uh, today we talk with Philip uh, Sunlightner, uh, co founder of Mike Me. Uh, Mike hey. Me claims to be the, uh, hey, good morning, the world's first wireless recording microphone. And he has an interesting story he'll share with you about going from yeah. a, maybe a not so successful crowdfunding uh, campaign to a successful one, as, as well as his exciting product. Uh, so, uh, good evening, uh, Philip. Uh, thanks for it's joining five, us. Five, five in the afternoon. So. Oh, okay, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining uh -huh. us live from Vienna, Austria, right? Uh, it's actually the company is based in Vienna, but I'm I'm pretty close to the hometown of Arnold Schwarzenegger, so the Austrian or the U.S. guys. That's my introduction joke normally. So it's like just 20 kilometers in north. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was born, so all the San Francisco, California guys. Okay, obviously. that's cool. That's good. That's a good connection. He was our governor for a number like of years. All, all the Austrians have like muscles like him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Hey, uh, so tell us briefly a little bit about your background. It's kind of interesting, actually. Yeah, so I'm, I'm from Austria. Um, I basically started as an audio engineer, so from a technical university where you learn like, how to build, design audio products and specialize in syst uh, software engineering for signal processing, so how you build like audio effects, uh, stuff okay. like that. And I always felt like that, that's, that's the thing I'm really good in because I'm also a musician. So I'm doing a lot of like electronic music with that stuff behind me. So you might see there is like uh, I don't know if there's musicians, but there's like a Abram push controller over there. Uh, my small oh, um, piano, piano. Yeah. So that's an acoustic one. I also have oh. electronic keyboards. So they, those are my keyboards. Um, so I did like a lot of music, mainly like pro programmed house music, funk stuff. Mm. with bands mm. but also programming back in the days it started like in 1997 something like that and it so over day i was starting like electronic stuff and signal processing and at night i spent basically all my nights in front of the computer when i found out they can do really cool stuff with computer so i was always interested like in new technology midi controller stuff like that um and thought i'm a really good software engineer and uh, then I started out like a software engineer for an insurance company because none of the big companies like Ableton or Native Instruments, Steinberg, Pro Tools. So I applied for 100 jobs worldwide. None of them wouldn't take me because I was coming straight from the university. Sure. So I started an insurance company, but then like after three months, um, AKG hired me away. Uh, for those of you not knowing AKG, so AKG is a manufacturer of, that's actually just like, sticker but it's AKG headphone really nice consumer totally. headphones but they world famous for professional microphones studio microphones live microphones wireless microphones um, professional headphones and especially for wireless microphones so we did like wireless systems for Kanye West, Rod Stewart, uh, a bunch of other very famous guys mm. and all ranges from beginning to top so I started there as a software engineer for wireless systems and Turned out after three years that uh, the management actually announced me to be a product manager for that project, which was like remote control software. I could like control Kani, Kani's wireless system. Oh, okay. Frequency management, stuff like that. So that's how I got into the wireless world. And it mm. turned out, looking back, that I was a way better product manager as I was a software engineer. Even though in the beginning, I, I told my manager, that's a completely stupid idea of making me the product manager because I have no idea. I'm coming from a technical background. I always was interested in design and stuff like that and, and product building, but I had no idea like how processes are done and stuff like that. But the cool thing was that I started then uh, thinking about the product. First, the first two years, mainly from an engineering point of view, is that so what is one of the main problems like in the oil industry? Or with a lot of products and engineers so you you start thinking like you, you're an engineer and then you design stuff like an engineer right so what what technically is possible which is like sometimes right but most time it's like completely different and then i completely fell in love with a 
brand, which is like that one. <laughs> so I yeah, hated it. I, 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 I hated Apple at first point. Oh, but really? Actually, yeah, yeah, I hated them because they were so arrogant. That's what I thought. And that's way too expensive. PC is way better because it's modular, open. Uh, it's cheaper. Uh, you don't get that much performance from Apple. That was like a typical PC point of view, right? Sure, um, sure. And then two sure. two colleagues convinced me, both software engineer. The one is now uh, working for a very large company called Apple. So he's in their audio department in San Francisco now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, and that's how I learned like Apple. And with, at the same point, um, we were changing our design company we're working with. Um, and so external Munich company. And those guys are also doing my product now. Um, they're from Denmark. They're called Design It. Their mm -hmm. head is called Nikolai Wee. Uh, mm -hmm. You may know Pragi the Dash, a wireless in your headphone, a very famous Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. They got like $3.5 million in, at Kickstarter mm -hmm. two years ago. And that's a close friend. And I learned him through that path. I learned Nikolai to know. And he's, he's actually one of my mentors. So I started learning. Thinking about or uh, learning about design thinking process, you know, you, you first look at customers about what is their problem, what is their process, not what's the product, right? So, and that, and Anna worked as a product manager, but in a very large corporation, AKG is part of Harman, Harman Becker, Harman Kardon, yeah. yeah, JBM yeah, 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 is like yeah, yeah, a five yeah, yeah. to ten billion dollar company with like right. five to ten thousand people. It's corporate, right? <laughs> So it's a lot of processes. It's not super creative. It's very hard to, to get things done. And it felt like running like to a two meter thick concrete wall with my new ideas. <laughs> and new ideas were basically, we worked on new ideas with the design company. So something like we should make wireless recording. No idea what it was like, because wireless is normally just live stuff or recording with like 5,000 euros expensive Sennheiser microphones, like for broadcasting. Absolutely. Like, you know that, that handheld microphones. Right, but not right, for recording right. and not an easy, cheesy solution on Bluetooth for Wi-Fi. And we had like crazy ideas like headphones with sensors. Nobody thought it like that's three, four years, four, five years ago. Like what should yeah. we do? Can I make the next track skipping forward? Yeah. Crazy stuff like that. And Nikolai later on figured out that you could do pretty cool like heart rate monitoring with hand sensor stuff like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So he's doing that now. And I, 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 I decided to leave AKG because it was not really possible because everybody told me you cannot do wireless over Bluetooth and Wi-Fi for good quality or decent quality recording, um, which is good enough just to make like a good podcast or good video or recording a lead vocal, which can be played later on the radio. I'm not, Mike Me is not about like replacing the 5,000 euro dollar mm -hmm. microphone. Sure, sure. So, and that's how it all started. Then I left AKG, and there was like, um, if you have seen our video, there's a lady in it, a female singer, Marina. She's a close friend. And ah, she's a professional okay. jazz singer. So, she brought up, so she has something similar, like that's a Zoom digital audio. Oh, recorder, yeah. Very famous. Yeah, very famous. Very famous to sell a lot. Um, it's Japanese, basically designed from the 90s. So, well, they were very famous because they took like, a big studio and push it into that device in the 90s, which was quite cool at that time, I think. Right, right, right. Made, right. made like a big, huge impact on the industry. So she's using like H4, which is a big one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Talking yeah. to her and I said like, yeah, I, I was basically holding it the wrong way around. Oh, that's um, all right. So right. What's, the, what's the problem with that device, right? It just has a single button. Uh, she's like, yeah, that button is not the problem. The problem is all the stuff around, like displays, you know, gain switches. What's a gain, right? Even she's a professional singer, remember that. And there's like right. a bunch of professional right. musicians who I mean they just mainly interested in music and create creating creative stuff, not in like recording and how it's all like. <laughs> Yeah, they they want so someone else to push the buttons. <laughs> yeah, true, 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 right? And then I at the same time I was like, I have three small kids, um, three small boys, so I had a oh, wow. job making music like mainly two hours a month, which is not really much. On that yeah. piano, yeah. like here yeah. over here. Oh, I love it. Uh, yeah, it's really nice, you know, acoustic instrument. And once I had yeah. an idea, like playing along with a house beat, it took me like, in best case, five minutes to set up stuff, right? Right. And I was like, why, why the hell, if I have just one hour in the evening, twice a month, why do I spend like five to ten minutes setting up stuff if I've just had less, less time? Because what I actually want to do is just play piano and record a simple stuff. And I always ended up like just using the iPhone. 
Because right, on the, the right. iPhone, there's the app, push a button, that's it. Right. The problem is just you can use the iPhone. The iPhone is actually pretty good in audio processing. Oh, but, really? Okay. Yeah, they're doing a pretty good job. I mean, they, they have a team of 50 engineers just working on the iPhone OS X audio performance. And it's not oh, the audio apps. God. It's just like noise cancellation. Sure. That's why, why, why our interview sounds not that good. Right. But the problem is if you want to use it and publish it, then the audio quality is not not perfect. And then even if they're playing the drums, I mean, the iPhone is made for speech and laptops. It's not made Absolutely. for music. Yeah, it's very voice and enhanced. Then, right. And if it's noisy, you have to have to close, close the microphone to your mouth so you won't like record stuff like that, even if people do that. And then there was like second, that's like a very famous Apogee mic. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, USB yeah, microphone yeah. or has a way like a proprietary uh, thing. And then it all starts like, you know, okay, it has a stand. Why has every microphone cable on the bottom like yours? Right, right, right. Uh, why does right. it have a stand if it's mobile? Because that's a mobile microphone. Like you transport it, you transport it <laughs> right. like that, right? Right. Why does it have like 500 buttons? So if you take that everything together, uh, we were starting, okay, so maybe you should think about the process instead just of a microphone. Interesting. And that's basically how it all started. It's just wow. really minutes because it's a microphone, it's an app, it's a cloud platform, stuff like that. Because these days, it's all about you know getting online fast. You're co if the first who's online and making it, let's say, decent quality, wins, basically. And that's not quite a nice content. So you should focus more like... If that's like 100% of quality you can reach, getting to 80% is quite easy. Mm. But getting to the 100% or close, you never reach the 100%, but getting to 80, 98% is like quite hard. And that's true for basically everything, like building a product, making a video, making a song. So um, that and bringing down the timestamp from making a video or making a song from some hours, days, weeks to just some minutes. Um, that was like the basic goal. Sure. Hey, give us give us a quick tour of the uh, mic, me, Mike. I mean, it's really interesting, actually. Yeah. And uh, you know, and, and some of the unique qualities you feel it has and stuff like that. So first is the shape. So uh, one of the key questions was, uh, what if Apple would build a microphone? They <laughs> not interested in microphones, not in, in like standalone microphones. Okay. But though, that's already like some say the coolest microphone, but uh, I wanted it that it looks completely different. Mm -hmm. And everybody would say, most people think it's a speaker, which shocked yeah. the beginning, yeah. but it's quite cool because if, if there's like five microphones sitting next to each other, you would know that's different, even you don't know what it is. Oh, and then one of the key things from design point of view, because it's like a small box. Yeah, it it's like nice. an amp. I mean, I have big, <laughs> yeah, um, it's different. Some say it's bulky. But actually, there's like a very large condenser. Uh, so you can actually you actually can put it on the table, which does not maybe sound like a super innovation, but sometimes it's very small things. Because with that microphone, you always have like you know that that tripod, which first is ugly and it's not really usable for mobile applications. Um, right. And it does not have any sense beside getting rid of the cable or pushing it a little bit on top that the cable could get out. So why should you put the cable on bottom if you can put it on the back, right? Exactly. So put all those connectors on the back. Oh, nice. You still, you still can connect like the USB connector here. You still can use it as a USB microphone. And I just place it on the table. So um, you could put it on a table and get rid of one thing, which is the stand. It's kind of manufactured in Germany, not China. Yeah, I was going to ask Germany. you that. So it's good old German in Germany. Quality. Yes, really? I nice. like Germany a lot. So yeah. our two main designers for the app, Alex and Manuel, the industrial designer, yeah. they won like 40 plus international design awards like Red Dot, IF, a lot of European yeah. awards. And they are from Munich. So we fought uh, for keeping the quality high, but also it's way e easier for logistics because most of the stuff is sold to Europe, to US. You don't have to ship from Asia to Europe to sell your stuff. And it's easy to monitor the quality, like quality um, insurance, stuff like that. Uh, mm. It's way easier if, if your manufacturing mm. partner is just like sure. three to four hours away by car instead of just traveling around the world. Sure. And each visit is like at least $5,000 in cost. And right. then if you honestly calculate that in your, in your uh, business case, I mean, you have to take in account like traveling at least once a month to 
China, which is like at least hundred and fifty thousand dollars per year. Tell me, when, when are you guys gonna start shipping these things after the the campaign ends? Uh, January two thousand sixteen is the official. So then they will be available in stores. Uh, yeah. Indiegogo backers can uh, will get it in November two thousand fifteen. Wow, so two hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Towards the end of the year, beginning of. I mean, the also, it's, it's way cheaper. So um. So it will cost two ninety nine dollars, um, and now we're offering. Ooh. So we started with one sixty nine, and now it's one seventy nine because the first one, and I think pretty we're pretty close that the one seventy five nine is already off. So we are five hundred pieces of new yeah. sold. So yeah. hurry and get yours for one seventy nine. Anyway, we'll close off the interview. But I thank you for your time. So anyway, that, that was, was uh, very interesting. Thanks. Yeah. For yeah, that was Philip uh, Sunlightner of Mike Me, a developer of the Mike Me, and uh, making high quality sound with a Bluetooth wireless microphone for for you indie developers and uh, video podcasters and other people who would use a, a portable on the go. And yeah. you know, and he said, you know, after after this campaign, it'll go up to two ninety nine. You can get one for about one seventy nine plus uh, accessories. It'll just be a little bit over two hundred. So um, yeah, it's a great deal, actually. So so anyway, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is Greg Blurry, AK Social Break on so. Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network. We believe in tech, startups, design, and you. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and be careful out there. Thanks, thanks. a lot, Philip. Bye. Right, Bye. Right, see bye. you.